In this video, you will learn what parallel recording is and what it can be used for. You will learn how to activate parallel recording, set up recorders, and about available options during the measurement. What is parallel recording? If you are familiar with Catman, you know that how a measurement is started or stopped is defined in the DAC jobs, by hand, with a trigger, or at a certain time. The measurement data is always recorded at the previously defined sample rate. With the recorders, you can significantly increase the performance of Catman. I would like to present this to you graphically. In the measurement job, only the acquisition of the measured values is defined. They are stored in individual recorders. Each recorder can store at a different recording rate. This recording rate cannot be higher than the sample rate, but lower. Start and stop of the storage can be defined separately in each recorder. So immediately with trigger, time, etc. Different channels can be involved in the individual recorders. It is also possible to specify a different storage location for each recorder. What can parallel recording be used for? If you are a monitor for an event over a long period of time and want to store it at a high sample rate, you can use a recorder to store the entire period with only 10 measured values a second. In another recorder, you use a trigger and store when the trigger event occurs with 20,000 measurement values per second. This enables you to have a good overview of the full time range while also capturing the transient event with a high sample rate. If the measurement data needs to be processed by different departments or companies, different recorders can be used to divide the channels of your project to distribute channels and data as needed. Or if you test 10 different samples, you can use 10 recorders to save the data of each sample separately. Parallel recorders can also be used for asynchronous tests that do not start at the same time. In addition, recorders can also be started with EasyScript, which can provide a great deal of flexibility in your recordings. Before I start, a quick look at my hardware. I have connected two force transducers, a displacement transducer and a thermocouple to a Quantum X MX840B. The type of the module does not matter because parallel recording has nothing to do with the hardware used. All sensors are already configured. The first three sensors are measured at the default sample rate and the thermocouple at the slow sample rate. Now to my measurement task. I want to measure over a long period of time and still record sudden events at the force transducers at a fast sample rate. The long-term recorder will continuously store with 10 measured values per second. Recorder A will trigger on force transducer A and store with 10,000 measured values per second. Recorder B will trigger on force transducer B and store with 10,000 measured values per second. I will now demonstrate how to configure the recorders. First, I activate the Easy Monitoring option in the Options. This means that the recorders are now available in the DAC jobs. The recorders are initially automatically numbered but can be renamed. To do this, click the name twice with a pause between clicks, not a double click. I have to adjust the sample rate of the DAC job, which is done in the sample rate groups. Here you see the same settings as in the channel table. To go to the settings in the recorders, first the long-term recorder. As you can see, the maximum recording rate is limited to the maximum sample rate because, of course, the recording is not faster than the sample rate. The recorders offer the ability to reduce the data. You can control how Catman reduces the data with this box. Catman uses a low-pass filter by default. If this is not what you want, check this box. If you check it, every 1,000th value will be saved. All other values are ignored. This diagram shows a long-term measurement with filter red and without filter blue. As can be seen, depending on the signal curve, short-term pulses are sometimes not visible in the long-term measurement without filtering. The signal deflection could lie exactly between two stored values of the long-term recorder and therefore remain undetected in the data, even if the amplitudes in the long-term measurement with filter are much smaller than in the original data, it can be seen that there are events. I'll leave the check mark. The start condition is immediately, and the stop condition is on DAC job end. Now to the two trigger recorder. We do not want to limit the sample rate here. So we store exactly the same number of values as are measured. The trigger channel of recorder A is force transducer A. I set the level to 5 Newton. 
pre-trigger one second, stop after four seconds, so in total, five seconds. Now recorder B. Again, the standard recording rate to 10,000. The trigger channel of recorder B is force transducer B. I set the level to five Newton, pre-trigger two seconds, stop after three seconds, in total, also five seconds. The start, stop, and recording rate for all the recorders are defined here. In the next step, I'll define the storage path and file name. Here I will simply use the placeholder's job and date time so that the name on the job and recorder is inserted automatically. This is by default. This allows the recorder name to show what data is included in it. For ease of demonstration, I'll use the same file path for the different recorders to show you the saved data files within the file explorer. Finally, I'll select which channels are included in each recorder. I'll deactivate channel B with recorder A and channel A in recorder B. Done. This is of course only an example. How triggered, where stored, and which channels you store in which recorders depends of course on your task. You'll now be able to see the actual measurements live with the prepared visualization object. Next, I'll be starting the measurement. Now the recorder console appears, which informs about the progress of the measurement. If required, you can also start storage manually or interrupt the process if you have inadvertently defined a trigger condition incorrectly. The message window shows you which measurements have already been taken. As you can see, the long-term recorder is already storing measurement data. The other two recorders are still waiting for their trigger conditions. If I now load force transducer A, the trigger condition of recorder A is fulfilled and measurement values are stored. When I load the force transducer B, the trigger condition of the recorder B is fulfilled and measured values are stored. In Windows Explorer, you can see how Catman stores the data. The long-term measurement is still running, so there is no file yet, while recorders A and B create a new measurement file with each trigger. Finally, I will end the measurement. Now the long-term recorder also creates a measurement file. You have now learned how parallel recorders operate. As you can see, parallel recorders are extremely powerful and yet quite easy to scale. Professional trainings are available at our HBK Academy for beginners and advanced. Of course, also for Catman. If you have any questions or suggestions, please do not hesitate to contact us. See you next time.